We're here to talk about the One Billion Coalition. So one billion individuals or households uh, set to take action to build resilience by 2025. But what does this resilience look like in action and how is it measured? In action, it mean, really means that you have individuals that understand that there are actual steps they can take. If they have a better understanding of how they can prevent and mitigate shock, they can improve, reduce their vulnerability. There are very concrete actions they can take, and there is a network there to support them. One of the things we're seeing, and this is very important, when you take certain countries, the El Nino phenomena, in one country you'll have communities affected by drought and others affected by floods. So impact, shock, is very much community specific. So this will really be about one billion individuals that have taken active steps to understand their, their environment, to understand the main risk they face on a daily basis, and who will tap into a multiple of resources to actually reduce potential impact of shock. And the, the critical question I think you're asking is how are we going to measure this? And right now we're working on a series of instruments, not just us, that will actually help us develop an, an index to that will, of resilience so that we can capture it. And we're working with, a, with Zurich as a great partner, looking at the issue of resilience for floods with our national society partner in Mexico. And basically, they're doing a real-time assessment of what it means to reduce vulnerabilities, to reduce risks, and how does that compare to the potential impact of shock, and how can you actually measure that you've built up resilience. So then how do you work with your development cooperation partners to ensure that there's no sort of duplication of efforts here? You know, our critical presence in the communities is the most impressive thing I've found in this organization. And having been in government for a while, I can tell you that most often governments think macro. They design interventions that have mostly impact on a broad majority of people, which makes sense because in a way they have limited resources. And what these, this approach around resilience does is it, it brings back the concerns of the community. It helps us focus on the day-to-day -day lives of the, the, the last mile. Yep. People who would wait years before they can see that first road, that first uh, light bulb. People who desperately need support in addressing some of the challenges of their daily lives. So there is a direct connect, in my view, in working with development and, uh, agencies to understand this need and then to be able to focus resources. Or else what happens is you'll have a development that's one-sided, will eventually reach these poor and vulnerable communities, but by then it would have affected the lives of millions. So I think it actually makes sense. And more and more and more people involved in both development and humanitarian response understand it. Of course, we have to bridge the conversation. We have to be able to talk about the same thing. We have to understand what this means for us operationally. We have to understand the complementarity. So it will require a lot of effort from different stakeholders. But most of us agree, I don't think we can do anything else. We have to go down that route.